In order for practices to get paid for a number of the quality services you provide, you must be familiar with and able to optimise the use of the Calculating Quality Reporting System, or CQRS. This video presents a business manager's view of how they use CQRS in practice. It's designed as an overview to cover key elements of the CQRS site. We've also provided links to the CQRS training materials in the Associated Resources tab linked to this bundle. The CQRS helps practices track, monitor and declare achievement levels for a range of core quality services delivered as part of the GP contract, for example, QOF, faxonyms and direct enhanced services. To do this, the CQRS collects data from you in two ways. Firstly, data is collected automatically from your clinical system through the GP Extraction Service, or GPES. Secondly, data that can't be collected automatically can be manually input into CQRS. If you're brand new to CQRS, you'll need to apply for a login from your Commissioner's CQRS Administrator. They'll then add you as a user with the appropriate permissions, and you'll receive an email which will contain a link to the CQRS registration screen. There you can complete your registration details and create your password. Note that as well as using CQRS for your practice, you might be a PCN level user, as the resource is also used to declare network level achievement. Once you're a registered user for your practice or PCN, if you've been given the appropriate permissions, you can then add other users too. The main reason for you to use the CQRS site is to ensure that the payments you receive reflect the work that you've done in practice. Each year, after the GP contract has been negotiated, information about the quality services available for practices is published on the CQRS system. The commissioning organisation then offer those services out to you as a practice or PCN, and you can accept or reject the offer to participate in the delivery of each service. You become a participating practice for each service you've signed up to, and by signing up to that service, you give permission for data to be collected automatically from your clinical system by GPES. So let's take a look at the CQRS site. As mentioned, there's a PCN view of CQRS as well as a practice view. So if you have permissions to view the site at PCN level or for multiple practices, you'll see all these listed here. We'll start by focusing on the practice view. The system opens up on the home page, which is basically a list of your tasks and messages. Tasks generally require you to perform an action of some sort, whereas messages are normally just information. We'll return to this a little later in the video. One of the first things to notice is that if anything in the CQR site is highlighted in yellow, then this indicates that there's something to be completed in that section. We'll come across these as we work through the different pages of the site. So the first tab we're going to look at here is the Participation Management tab. Check that the correct financial year is selected at the top of the page. This defaults to the current financial year. Remember that services that will be offered here are not only the nationally available services, but also local enhanced services. The page will display the list of services according to your choice of quality service status filter. Any quality services that the Commissioner offers out to practices appear in this tab under the Offered filter. This practice has no services on their offered list at the moment, so here's a screenshot of what this list would look like. And you can review each offered service in more detail by clicking here. Then you have the option to either accept or reject an offered service. Note that if you don't opt to either accept or reject offered services, it's likely that your Commissioner will probably chase you for a response. So if you want to participate in the delivery of that service, you need to tick the box next to the Offered Service and Accept. This reports your acceptance up to the Commissioner, who also has a view of the CQRS, and automatically records your consent for the data required to be collected from your GP clinical system by GPES. It's worth stressing here that any data collected is aggregate data and no patient identifiable data is collected by CQRS. If we go back to the quality service status filter, where we originally chose offered, we could select rejected to view all the services we've previously rejected, but I'll select approved here, which displays the services that we've accepted and that have had that acceptance approved. This list is therefore the list of all the services which this practice is participating in for this financial year. So that's the first of the key actions you have to do as a service provider on the site agreeing to a participation offer. The second CQRS key action for you as a service provider is data entry and monitoring your achievements. 
The next tab along is the Data Submission tab. Within this section, there are a set of sub-tabs. Your role and permission level will dictate the tabs that are available to you here, so you may not see an identical set of tabs in your practice. For example, the business manager at this practice is also the business manager for the PCM, so she has access to the Network Achievement tab here. We're going to look at the Record Achievement tab. This section allows you to add or update data manually for any CQRS data requirements that are not collected automatically. It also lets you check the breakdown of the data that's been automatically collected. As usual, you need to ensure that the correct financial year is selected, and you can then select the quality service you want to view from this drop-down list. You can select the achievement date in this field at the top, so this list of dates in the drop-down are all achievement submission dates for the chosen service. If any of these dates are highlighted in yellow, you know immediately that you'll be able to add a new achievement there as it's an unfinished section. You need to select the relevant date and then select Add New Achievement. This then displays the different indicator groups within the selected achievement. Click on the indicator group that you want to edit and you'll be presented with the indicator information and a field for you to add a value, as well as the previously submitted value and the date that it was submitted. The new value box will be a field for free text. Add your value into the new values field. If you want, you can make some notes in the text box, for example, the reason that you're changing a previously submitted value. Then you can save the information you've added as a work in progress, which stores it without submitting it, or you can submit it there and then. You also have the option to cancel. You can adjust manually submitted data any time before the achievement in question is declared, but remember that you can only adjust manually submitted data. You can't adjust data that's been automatically extracted from your clinical system using GPES. The Commissioner can adjust this data for you, and we'll talk later about how you can request these changes. To view the data that's been automatically collected, we view the Achievement tab. When you access the Achievement tab, it defaults to the Declare sub-tab. Data that's been automatically extracted from your GP clinical system and uploaded into CQRS is displayed in the Achievements tab. Checking this data to ensure it's accurate is the third key action for you as a service provider on CQRS. The information displayed here lets you review your achievement information on CQRS as compared with your own understanding of how you've performed. It's sensible to not rely on the data that has been collected automatically being 100% accurate. In order to optimise the accuracy of the data and the payments that you'll receive, it's important to check the CQRS data against your clinical system. To do this, you'll need to run reports on your clinical system that match the different indicators for each service. The practice we're looking at here uses Arden's reports on an EMIS web system, but you could have your own local reports created. For each indicator, cross-check against the clinical system report, and if there are discrepancies, you can challenge the CQRS figures. To challenge the figures, you need to contact the commissioners, provide appropriate information in support of your challenge. Remember, only the commissioners can adjust the data that's been extracted automatically from your clinical system. If you're happy that the figures displayed on the site are accurate, you can declare that submission as being correct. Declaring achievements is the fourth key action that you'll take on the CQRS. To do this, go into the Declare tab where you'll find a list of all achievements and summary information on each. Prior to you declaring an achievement, its status is awaiting service provider approval. Each item can be declared separately, so you can declare some and leave others open, or you have the option at the top to select all. When you've selected all the services you want to declare, select Declare Achievement at the bottom. As with many actions taken on the site, you'll get this message at the top of the screen confirming your action. This one telling you that your declaration has been submitted and is awaiting approval. A declared achievement status then changes to become awaiting commissioning organisation approval. The commissioner will be monitoring these status changes on their view of CQRS. Once they approve, the status will change again to approved by commissioning organisation. And finally, once they request the payment be made to you by the NHAIS, i.e. the Exeter system, the status will change to payment requested. Once you've made this declaration, it's possible for the commissioner to adjust the achievement. If they do this, you'll receive a task and will need to approve it again on the declare list 
for it to be reprocessed. You'll receive tasks and messages in CQRS each time the status changes, which just help you to keep up to date and advise you of any actions that you need to take. Before we look at reports, we'll mention the Post Achievement Modelling tab, which lets you create what-if scenarios for past data. For example, what would we have been paid if we'd achieved differently? Using this section has no impact on actual achievements or achievement payments, and not all practices use it. The reports that are available to you as an individual user will vary according to your CQRS role. Each subtab displays a list of reports that come under that subtitle. For example, this is our list of reports under the Achievement subtab. To run a report, simply click on it. We'll choose Annual Activity Summary. Select the appropriate parameters, for example, the financial year, payment type and the quality service. If we don't select any specific payment types, it will just include them all. Your report will be created, open it by selecting it from the list, and it will open in a separate tab where you can browse the report page by page or by putting a specific page number into this field. You can also save, print or export as a PDF, Excel or CSV file. You'll need to save the report in one of those formats if you want to keep it for future reference because reports aren't saved automatically. Finally, You'll have noticed the small question mark box appearing next to some fields and headings on the screens that we've looked at. This is a link to help screens. So to summarise, the four key actions that you take as a practice or business manager for a practice on CQRS are agreeing to a participation offer to become a participating practice for a quality service, data entry for data that needs to be added manually, Checking data that has been automatically extracted from your practice clinical system through GPES and challenging any differences with the commissioner and declaring achievements. We've also provided links to the CQRS support videos and documentation alongside this video in the associated resources section. Here you'll find even more detail about some of the other elements of CQRS that might be of interest. Thank you.